In this video, we're going to see what we can discover when we zoom in on decimals on a number line. My number line on the top here, I'm going to start it out at zero and we're going to go all the way to one hole. I'm going to go ahead and label everything with decimals so we can see the scale of my number line. So this would be six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, and then one hole. So we're counting by one tenth on this number line. But I see some spaces on here, and I'm wondering what is what is going on in between, for example, between 3 tenths and 4 tenths, there's a gap right here. So are there numbers in between here? What does all of this gap right here represent? So that's where we're now going to zoom in. So on my next number line, I'm now beginning at 3 tenths and ending at 4 tenths. And now I have to figure out what are we counting by and what are all of these individual markings on this number line. And the easiest way for me to figure that out is to make an equivalent decimal. Instead of saying 3 tenths, I'm going to say 30 hundredths, and I'm going to say 40 hundredths. Now it looks like I'm just counting by 1 hundredth each time. Just like I was counting by 1 tenth before, now I'm counting by 1 hundredth. So this would be 35 hundredths, 36 hundredths, and so on. Finish labeling this. And then I, I have the same question as I did before. What if I zoomed in on another one of these sections? For example, what if I zoomed in on this section right here? What numbers are represented by this gap? So my new number line now starts at 35 hundredths and ends at 36 hundredths. And if I want to figure out what I'm counting by, it would help to make an equivalent decimal, 350 and 360. And again, because this, is, this number line is again split up into 10 sections, I can figure out that I'm counting by thousandths this time. So 351, 352, and so on. You may have noticed that each time I've zoomed in here, I have I'm, I was originally counting by tenths, then I was counting by hundredths, and now I'm counting by thousandths. I'm basically multiplying by one tenth every time I zoom in. So now I have my number line completely labeled. Can you guess what will uh, happen when I zoom in on another section? For example, this section right here. Can you guess what each of these points, the starting and ending point will be, and what each of these other points on the number line will be? What numbers are in between 352 thousandths and 353 thousandths? So let's zoom in and take a look. My first number would be 352 thousandths. My last number is 353 thousandths. I can make equivalent decimals by placing a zero in the ten thousandths place. And again, because there are ten sections here, we're counting by up by one every time. In this case, we're counting up by ten thousandths. So this would be 3,521, 3,522, and so on. I have to write really small now because I'm zoomed way in on my number line. This would be 3,526, 3,527. Then my last one, 3,529. So as you can see, I can keep zooming in an infinite amount of times. No matter what two numbers that I choose, there are always more numbers in between those numbers. So let's see if we can apply this idea to find the exact midpoint between two decimal numbers. So let's say I have the number 0 and 57 hundredths, and my next number would be 0 and 58 hundredths what is exactly halfway between 57 hundredths and 58 hundredths. We can visualize this on the number line, 57 hundredths, 58 hundredths. And just like we did in a, the previous examples when we zoomed in, we're going to make equivalent decimals. So I'm going to change this to 570 thousandths and 580 thousandths. 
If we now think of this as 570 and 580 thousandths, the exact midpoint would be 575. And we can check that on our number line by placing 575 at the midpoint and then just counting 571, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 580. So it does check out. Let's look at one more example. Let me erase what I have on here. This time, let's say that we have the decimals 0 and 254 thousandths and 0 and 255 thousandths. I can again place these on my number line 254 thousandths, 255. I can now make equivalent decimals by placing a 0 in the 10 thousandths place. And if I'm now thinking of this as 2,540 ten thousandths and 2,550 ten thousandths exactly halfway in between would be 2,545. If you look at this in between 40 and 50 is 45. So my exact midpoint right here should be 2,000, zero and 2,545 thousandths. We can check that 2,541, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 2,550 thousandths.